All that was left of the hunter were fragments of clothing, bones, and a few body parts. His face was beyond recognition after being shredded by the predator's teeth. In 1997, in the Russian Far East, an Amur tiger caused a horrific massacre, setting off a grim investigation that John Valent describes in his book, The Tiger, a true story of vengeance and survival. The man who died from the claws and teeth of the tiger was Vladimir Markov. He was a poacher who made the tragic mistake of wounding the Amor tiger and then stealing part of the tiger's prey by sawing off a couple of wild boar's haunches, which the tiger had left in the snow for a later meal. This is how Markov made a mortal enemy. To give you a better idea, that tiger was an alpha male in its prime, over 10 feet long from nose to tail and weighing about 500 pounds, combining, as the author claims, the agility of a cat and the mass of an industrial refrigerator. When such a tiger lands on its prey, it does so with the force of a piano dropped from a second-story window. Don't forget about meat hook claws as lethal as Velociraptor's talons, paws that could batter a brown bear to death, and jaws that clench with pressure ten times as much as is needed to crush someone's windpipe. To make matters worse, tigers being predators at the top of the food chain also possess great intelligence, an amazing memory, and an extremely vengeful temperament. To say that Markov got unlucky is to put it mildly. The wounded and angry tiger hunted down the poacher, and it did it on purpose. The tiger stalked out Markov's cabin, systematically destroying anything that had his scent on it, and then waited at the front door for Markov to come home. This was not an impulsive response from the animal, which lunged at the one who wronged it right away. The tiger waited 12 to 48 hours before attacking. Markov seemed to know that the tiger was seeking revenge and the poacher was faced with a tough choice. Either leave his cabin in the woods never to return, or kill the tiger and then sell its body parts on the black market. But the choice he made turned out to be a tragic mistake. When the man and the beast finally came face to face, Markov managed to shoot the tiger at point-blank range with a shotgun, but without much effect. The tiger only got more enraged. You've already realized how this fight ended and the researchers suspect that the predator ate the poacher not because it was hungry. However, the tiger's story didn't end there. After it got the taste of human flesh, the wounded animal began to view humans as prey. A few days later, the predator struck again. This time, the victim was a young ex-military man who went hunting in the forest. All that was left of him were scraps of clothing, a watch, a cross pendant, and a pair of boots. Experts say that in both cases, the tiger targeted specific victims, stalked them out, and waited patiently for several days before carrying out a deadly ambush. There's even information that says that on the second occasion, the tiger carried a mattress from a nearby hut to lie in comfort while waiting for the victim to turn up. In the end, the beast terrified an entire village, frightening the locals and hunted people for several hours before the authorities managed to kill it. If you think about it, it's clear why the tiger acted the way it did. First, it was motivated by the desire for revenge, and then the animal just couldn't stop. But this tiger's not the only one who suffered morally and physically from poachers. Animal psychologists believe that poachers don't just kill, they traumatize animals, driving them to despair. Surviving, which is actually hard enough as it is, turns into a cruel struggle. And so wild animals begin to lash out at humans. There are increasingly more reports of animals fighting back against poachers, packs of lions attacking hunting camps, rhinos charging unsuspecting hunters, and tigers targeting humans. Why? To get their revenge. Perhaps the animals have simply been cornered and are now willing to strike back until the humans who hurt them can be barely recognized. There are actually a lot of stories like that. In November 2017, a famous South African hunter, Thenis Botha from Johannesburg, cross paths with a herd of elephants, including pregnant females. Three elephants immediately stampeded toward the hunters, and Botha opened fire with his rifle, forcing a female elephant to storm in and lift the man with her trunk. At this point, another member of the hunting party fired a fatal shot at the elephant, and as the animal collapsed dead, she simply crushed Botha. This may seem just like a tragic coincidence. After all, that elephant didn't fall on the hunter on purpose to kill him, right? But the thing is, the relationship between humans and elephants has become noticeably more belligerent in recent years. 
where for centuries humans and elephants lived relatively peacefully, there's now hostility and violence. Today, elephants are constantly striking out, destroying villages and crops, assaulting and killing people. And it's not just the elephant's aggression towards humans that's alarming, but the way this aggression manifests. For example, since the early 1990s, young male elephants in the Palanisberg National Park and in the Liluwe Umfalozi Game Reserve in South Africa have been brutally killing rhinos. So brutally, I can't even tell you the details. Elephant researchers cite high testosterone levels in newly matured males or competition for land and resources between elephants and humans as the cause of the aggression. And that's disregarding the fact that today's elephant populations suffer from a form of chronic stress, a kind of trauma to the entire species, all because of decades of poaching. I share all my intimate thoughts and my experiences with someone, it just cuts the weight of it in half. You know, it's like a snake swallowing its own tail. Everything comes full circle. But can animals actually consciously take revenge? Yes, there are cases like that. However, we often tend to misinterpret facts, attributing the traits and behavior typical of humans to animals. Still, the experts who study animal behavior say that some species indeed practice revenge. Like chimps, for example. Macaques also understand what revenge is and, moreover, can act indirectly. For example, if they can't attack the offender because they're much stronger, they instead wound someone weaker, sometimes a relative of the one they want to take revenge on. Sometimes vengeful animals join forces, though they might not realize it. In 2010, three poachers went to Kruger Park to set snares to catch animals. They returned the next night to see if they had any luck. On their way back, the poachers came across hippos. And hippos, as you probably know, aren't exactly the friendliest animals. They charged at poachers who scattered in different directions. Two of them made it out of the park safely, but became worried when their friend didn't come back. Officials who searched the area where the attack took place later found part of a human skull and pieces of torn clothing. Apparently, while fleeing from the hippos, the poachers stumbled across a lion, one or even a whole group. A loaded hunting rifle and ammunition were found nearby. Why the man didn't defend himself is unclear. Maybe it all happened too fast. In 2018, Claude Clanens became a victim of animals' revenge, too. Claude was a hunter who'd been killing animals in South Africa for more than 30 years. Back then, he, along with his team, killed a buffalo in Limpopo, and it was definitely not the first time. But as Clanens prepared to load the carcass into the car, another buffalo from the same herd attacked the hunter and gored him with its horn. The attack hit the femoral artery, killing the man almost instantly. This may come as a surprise to those who've never seen buffaloes in action, but they are, in fact, pretty damn dangerous animals, mostly because they're huge. They can grow up to 5.6 feet tall and up to 11 feet long without the tail. A male African buffalo can weigh up to 1,918 pounds. Don't forget about horns, aggressiveness, and territorial nature, and you get a real killing machine. Buffaloes can fend off even several lions and will easily kill a man who comes too close and looks dangerous. It's estimated that up to 200 people are killed by African buffaloes each year. And according to Animal Planet, buffaloes have killed more hunters in Africa than any other animal. No wonder African buffaloes are among the most dangerous animals to hunt. If the animal can't be killed with the first shot, the only thing that can save the hunter is immediate and very, very fast running. But buffaloes aren't the only ones who understand the concept of avenging their kin. In the summer of 2016, several media outlets in the Indian state of Kerala reported that a male tiger had killed a man. When the story began to unravel, it turned out that a team of poachers had attacked and killed the tigress. The animal had been skinned and the meat shared, but no one suspected what would happen next. A few days later, the group returned to the same area, and the man who had killed the tigress was alone at some point, the tiger, who was obviously seeking revenge on the man, took this opportunity. Apparently, the predator was a partner of the killed tigress, and it did what it planned. The poacher died on the way to the hospital. Who else can take revenge on poachers? Crocodiles. Well, even if these predators don't care about revenge, they obviously don't mind eating the prey that comes straight to their mouths. Scott Van Zyl disappeared during a hunting safari on the banks of the Limpopo River. He was a professional hunter and had even taken foreign clients on hunting trips. So when Van Zyl didn't return, his fellow campers raised the alarm. The hunter was tracked to the riverbank where they discovered his abandoned backpack. And then what was left of the man himself. 
However, three crocodiles had to be shot and dissected to discover the remains, and then they had to carry out DNA tests to confirm the crocs actually ate the hunter. It's worth mentioning that at least four people have been killed by crocodiles in Zimbabwe, in the same area, in the same month. Don't you think the predators just got tired of being hunted all the time? Plus, at the time, Zimbabwe suffered heavy rains causing river levels to rise. This may have caused crocodiles to appear in areas where they normally wouldn't be seen, and the closer crocodiles are to people, the greater the chance that an encounter with them will result in someone's death. Mama, now the gator got in the house. Now the gator? Give me that shovel. Come here. <coughs> By the way, here's an interesting fact. Van Zyl was a close friend of Botha, the hunter we mentioned in the beginning of the video. Yes, the one crushed to death by the elephant. Seems like these hunters really pissed off the animals. Actually, there are quite a few stories when the wounded animals, which could not be killed with the first shot, went into attack mode. In the Italian province of Sassari, a woman shot twice at a wild boar that charged at her. But that didn't stop the animal, although the rifle was still pointed at its face. Eventually, the woman had to fight back with the butt of her rifle until the boar finally retreated into the bushes where it came from. It's not clear if this woman even intended to hunt the boar or had some other goal. Well, some animals don't really care about your intentions. During an annual fishing trip near Coral Bay in Western Australia, four fishermen were terrified when a bronze whaler shark about 10 feet long approached their boat and chomped on the propeller. However, before this happened, the fishermen accidentally caught the shark on the end of one of their lines. The predator resisted for about an hour and then decided to go on the offensive heading straight towards the propeller. It attacked so persistently that at some point the propeller completely disappeared into the shark's mouth. After hanging like that for a couple of minutes, the shark suddenly changed its mind and swam away. No one, including the boat, was hurt. But was it an act of revenge? Actually, that's hardly the case. Sharks are attracted to the electrical pulses emitted by some boat motors. Usually, sharks detect these pulses in their prey, picking up even the tiniest muscle contractions, but evolution clearly didn't expect there would be boat motors in the oceans that confuse the sharks. Another probable reason is curiosity. The shark bites something to see if it's worth eating. After all, there's a bunch of stuff floating around in the vast ocean. You have to figure out which of it tastes good and which is just a propeller. See you later.